Hey guys, how's it going? Right, welcome back to a new pickups video. And as you can see, this one's gonna be PlayStation related. So lately, that's all I've been playing is just PS1. Uh, PlayStation's just become my retro system of choice. And since I got that new TV, the Panasonic, I've absolutely loved playing on the PlayStation. You know, I've got a nice big screen, picture quality is incredible, the same quality from that. I said in the previous video, it's got 20 watts of channel, I wasn't certain. I checked the manual, because the manual came with it, which was great. And yeah, it has, it's got 20 watts of channel, which is really great for a TV. So yeah, very happy with that TV, it's awesome, man. And PS1 is just fantastic for it. And I've just been really enjoying playing the system a lot lately. It's been like going back to when it came out, you know, when I got mine back in 97, and had all that great time playing all those amazing games. So that's all I've been doing really. I haven't been focusing on any other systems that are retro other than the PlayStation. So I've been picking up a few games and I thought, you know what, it's about time. Did a new video, showed you what I've been grabbing because there'll be more coming up. And really that's where I'm going to go at the moment. Uh, I've watched a great video the other day from Pete Dorr. And he was talking about collector burnout and how to try your best to avoid collector burnout. And he was giving tips. And one of the tips he gave was to basically concentrate, just choose one system that you really want to collect for collect for that system for a year and then see how you feel after that year and I thought you know what that makes perfect sense and the PlayStation is the system I'm enjoying the most at the moment and the games for the most part the games that I want anyway are really cheap there's only a handful literally about four or five that are in the higher price bracket so I thought you know I'm going to do that so I'm going to just spend the next year chipping away at the PS1 get that collection built up nicely enjoy playing the games which is what I've been doing the most you know as I've said since I got the PlayStation I've been buying a game, playing it, buying a game, playing it, and it's been fantastic. So yeah, it's, been, it's going really well, and that's the, that's the way I want to go. So any future pickups are going to be PlayStation related, and less, of course, I get more mod current gen, but then again, that's PlayStation, it's PS4, so yeah, there you go. I even dragged out the PS3 the other day, I dusted that bad boy off and started playing The Last of Us again, because uh, everyone's playing Last of Us 2, and I can't afford that, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to play Last of Us, and I put it on, and man, that game is amazing. It really does hold up well. It looks beautiful on the PlayStation 3. I'm really surprised how good it looks. But yeah, I've been having a lot of fun with it. I, I sat there on uh, was it Friday, I think it was. And I must have played for about four or five hours straight. I just got totally sucked in. I couldn't put it down. I was just absolutely loving the story. So yeah, it's, it's really good and the action. And it, I don't know if it's because I've not played it for a while. I was worried that when I haven't played a game like that for a while, I was going to suck at the controls and I was going to get my ass handed to me loads. Didn't really. I got killed a few times by the clickers because that just happens. But generally, I did really well. I didn't get stressed out by it, which is absolutely fantastic. Which makes it change for modern games. I was quite calm and enjoyed it. Uh, even the bloaters didn't annoy me. So yeah, very cool game. I'm still going to continue to finish that one, obviously. And then eventually I'll get number two and play through that. Got a lot of PS4 games I haven't played. So yeah, it's going to take a while. I'm hoping that with the PS5 around the corner, eventually, the end of this year, PS4 games will start dropping in price. And I can start picking them up, which would be cool. Anyway, we're here for PS1, which is the most important thing, isn't it? So yeah, so the first game I've got is an arcade classic, and that is, of course, Ridge Racer. Uh, it's the dual case one, very nice. I don't know if it's supposed to have a demo disc in the back. Uh, I don't think so, because it's actually blank, so I assume not. Unless there are some that do, some that don't, I don't know. Uh, lovely, because all these games are in really nice condition. I did really well. Um, and I'm not paying over the odds, either. I'm, I'm waiting. There's a game I want at the moment that I found out about recently. I didn't know it was on PlayStation. It looks really cool. And at first, I was going to buy it, and then I checked the sold listings, and I realised that people were charging about 10, 10 to £15 pound too much for it compared to the majority of sales that have happened. So I'm going to wait on that one, but I will get it. But yeah, Ridge Race is great. Really fun. I've been enjoying this a lot. The music's still brilliant. Um, I mean, the graphics, you know, they are what they are. <laughs> but, you know, I still think they look cool. I like all the colours and a lot of the skylines and everything. The only downside is I always forget that Ridge Race is just a port of the arcade machine. So you've got... Different, different difficulties, which essentially just add a little bit extra to each to the, to the original track every time you up the difficulty, uh, and you get nice, nice sunsets, which is really cool. Um, but basically, the game is just time trials, really. It's getting the best time, getting the best position. It's just an arcade game, but I'm a big fan of the series of Ridge Racer, so I had to grab it. And yeah, I've been having a lot of fun. It's, it's, it's the beauty of it is recently, in the last probably few months or so. I've just been craving simplicity. I love modern games, and when I put Last of Us on, it really invigorated me and was like, yeah, I do remember why I like playing these story-driven, long-ass games. But I really, just, right now, I just want simplicity. I just want something I can just pop on, 
if it's a quick half an hour or an hour or so and just have fun. I know The Last of Us was an exception, of course, but generally that's what I've been doing. And so the Ridge Racer game is fantastic because like, if I'm like going a bit mad and I don't know what to do and I've watched too much TV or watched too many films, I just need a break and I want to try something different. And you know, I don't, I'm not in the mood for putting music on or whatever. I want to actually you know, engage my brain instead of just lying there listening to tunes or walking around the house and doing house work and whatever. I come in here, slap Ridge Racer on, do a couple of laps, a couple of tracks, well, same track, different difficulty. And it just it just fills that gap, you know what I mean? It's just like, yeah, I feel satisfied and it's, it's really fun. So, yeah, glad I picked it up anyway. Great game. Uh, next one I picked up was one that I remember liking quite a lot. Don't know if I'm right, though, because it's not as good as I remember it, but it's all right. Uh, it's Rage Racer, so another one of the Ridge Racer games. Uh, again, in great condition, of course. Yeah. What would you expect from me? You know what I mean? I'm going to buy crap, am I? <laughs> yeah, it's it's really good. Um, not a lot different from Ridge Racer. Not as much as I thought was different. Because, you know, I'm used to, with Ridge Racer, the more, the more recent games like the PSP game, the 3DS, Ridge Racer 6 on the 360, Ridge Racer 7 on the PS3, and being able to do all the drifting. And the drifting makes such a massive difference to the game. It makes it so much better, and I, I find it a lot easier to get around the tracks without hitting walls, and I can... It feels more competitive, whereas these older games are not really like that. You can drift, but it's not to your advantage because as soon as you do it, especially on the first Ridge Racer, you drift on that and the thing's like a block of wood and it just bounces off walls and it, it skids out of control and it's really hard to regain control. And when you do, it knocks your acceleration right the way back and you have to start from scratch and you just get overtaken and beaten by the AI, so it's kind of annoying. But Ridge Racer, is, it's just like a prettier version of Ridge Racer. So I thought it was more in-depth than it actually is, but it's still cool, still cool to have it. So I do want to get all the Ridge Racers again. Back when I got my machine, back in 97, I don't know when the games came out, but between 97 and 2000, the only game that I ever played Ridge Racer was Ridge Racer Type 4. I had a Japanese pirate at that. And I absolutely love Type 4 to this day. I mean, the intro with the girl getting in the car and the music and yeah, and the game itself is superb. But it's been a long time since I've played, so I can't remember if you can drift on that. I think you can because it's, it's based in Japan, so I assume you can. I'll find out when I pick it up anyway because it's dirt cheap. Right, next one is uh, a bit more gun-based. And this one is a sequel to a game I've already got, which is one of my favourite games on the PlayStation. Uh, and I wanted to get this again because I've had it before and I couldn't remember if I liked it or not. So I thought, I love the first one, I'll grab the second one. And that is Die Hard Trilogy 2. Now, the first one is one of my favourite games on PlayStation, as I say. Mostly I play on Die Hard Trilogy. I play Part 2, the light gun game. I'm absolutely brilliant at that. I love that. And I don't have the light gun. You have to have a specific light gun. I can't think it's the Predator light gun, I think it's called or something. You can't use the G-Con with the original Die Hard, whereas I, I believe you can with Die Hard too. So I've got to get a G-Con for it. Uh, and yeah, with the original Die Hard, when I play the second part, I always play with D-pad and just move the cursor around the screen. And I've clocked that game many times and got good scores. And you know, I'm pretty skillful at it now and I find it quite, quite easy to do. Uh, I absolutely love that game. I adore it. So I was looking forward to trying it on this one. Now, first of all, I played the third-person mode, which is where, you, like in the first game, you're running around Nakatami Plaza and you've got to get to the lift before the bomb goes off. This one seems a bit more story-driven. They've got an actual FMV story, and you have to find like key cards and things to open doors and find your way around. The gunplay is more fun. The sound effects are cooler. The music's really good. Uh, it's, it's pretty decent. Uh, I haven't played the third part, but I did play the second one because it's another light gun adventure. And it feels a lot like Area 51 to me in that kind of digitised sort of graphics. It isn't as uh, cartoony as the original game was. It's really hard. Basically, because I haven't got a light gun, I have to use the D-pad, which I can't because it's too slow. It doesn't move the cursor quick enough. But you also, on this one, you have the analogue option. So I thought, well, maybe that's better. The analogue will be a bit smoother. But no, it's, it's the opposite to the D-pad. And instead of being too slow, it's too quick. And it's really hard to control. Now, I've played it a few times and I've managed to get reasonably decent at it and i've got to the bit where you're in the um dining room and you have to fight a boss i can't kill the boss i've got no chance because it's too twitchy with the analog stick and i just can't hit the guy so if i've got a light gun it'd be a shitload better and i reckon it'd be a lot of fun but from what i've seen so far i really like the layout of the it's more of a proper light gun game whereas the first one was really cool but this feels more like a time crisis sort of game it's excellent i saw someone on instagram a while ago they posted a picture and that's what inspired me. I thought, you know what, I'm going to grab it and see if I like it. And uh, It's pretty cool. I still prefer part two of Die Hard Trilogy than I do Die Hard Trilogy 2, but um, when I get the light like on it, it'll probably change things. So there you go. So there's one more game. And this one 
a game I've never played on PlayStation before. And I can't remember how I found out about it. It's probably because I do a lot of Googling for like, you know, the usual like hidden gems, rare games, you know, um, overlooked games, you know, those kind of things. And this one popped up. This was a late release. I think it was 2002, if I remember correctly. And it's a first person shooter. And I looked at some gameplay and I thought, you know, it looks pretty good. Then I saw a list where someone had said, actually, it's a really decent game. It's worth getting. So I thought I'd grab it. And I got a cheap copy the other day. Uh, and it's called Delta Force Urban Warfare. So this is really cool because it came out in 2002. It's got twin stick action. So you, you can play it like a modern first person shooter. But the weird thing is the controls are bizarre. You have to hold triangle down to do certain actions. And so for ages, I didn't know how to reload the gun. And then I found out what you've got to do. You have to hold the triangle button and press R1, R2, sorry. Which is like, why would you do that? It's complicated. I've never seen a game do that ever. So basically, you've got all the, not the standard buttons where you can shoot and open doors and trigger buttons and God knows what else and crouch and lean and peek and whatever. And then they've added an extra layer where you can use the triangle button held down to activate other options on all the other buttons. Imagine if they did, they did that with a modern controller now. Jesus, man, that'd be complicated. They're complicated enough as it is, but... Holy shit. And I was trying to pick up ammunition off a table and I couldn't work it out. You just pressed the triangle button and I was pressing other things and eventually picked it up. Then there was a uh, suitcase you have to grab when you're on a boat. And I was trying everything. I thought, I don't understand this. And it came down to something to do with holding the triangle. And I think the reload button or something or it might have been the triangle on its own. It wasn't well designed. <laughs> you know, when you play games now and you're used to things like square opens a door, circle is crouch, X is jump and triangle for changing weapons. And then you've got r1 r2 to aim and shoot and you know it's, it's so much easier and it's, it's really interesting going back and playing the old first person shooters and seeing how they've progressed and how they've worked out the different control schemes over the time they've tried this they've tried that eventually they've settled on the system that we have now that which works perfectly you know even things like back in the day when they used to have like on xbox and they have instead of zooming with the trigger you click the stick down like r1 or r2 um r3 r3 l3 i get it well l3 r3 too many buttons on the controllers that's the point <laughs> but yeah i mean that's that's just mental because you know you're trying to i think it's usually like l1 and you have to do it click it to zoom in and you've got to move the character around as well it, it, it's really cumbersome and so using the triggers all the shoulder buttons was a lot better an idea but yeah delta force um pretty good really nice graphics for the time it's 2002 so you're talking two years after ps2 one year after xbox and they were knocking out a game on the playstation one is just insane to me but it looks pretty good. Frame rate's a bit sluggish in places. It can sort of jerk around quite a bit. But it's, it's not bad. It, the good thing is it's not... I thought it was going to be stealth-based because it's a Delta Force game. And I thought, is it going to be like Spec Ops or Rainbow Six or something? But no, it's, it's a lot more just action. You just run around and gun them all down. And there's like sniper sections. I say, I'm, I'm only about... I don't know if it's like the third level or something. I'm not very far in. But you're on a boat. And you've got to get down, get down to the bottom of the boat. Kill all the blokes as you're going along. Grab a suitcase and make your way back to the top of the boat. I haven't made my way to the top of the boat yet because every time I walk out the door, some bastard clips me and I keep getting killed and it's really frustrating. Just like the other day, I thought I'd got him. I thought, oh, I've done it. And then I turned around and some bloke shot me in the back and I was like, for God's sake. So yeah, it's, it's kind of frustrating. But it's an interesting game and it only, I can't remember how much I paid. It's not five quid or something. It wasn't a lot. So it's, it's well worth checking out if you've never played it. Uh, it's a pretty cool game. I mean, for me, when I had a PlayStation in the 90s, the best first-person shooter that I played graphically was Quake 2, which looked absolutely stunning. Um, I don't know how it holds up now, but at the time, it looked absolutely great. So, yeah, really cool. So, yeah, so that's it, really. That's all i picked up at the moment. I say PS1 is all I'm playing. I don't give a shit about any other retro systems at the moment. I'm just absolutely loving the PlayStation. I'm really in the mood for that 32-bit era. So I'm picking up more games. I've got another one on the way. And then when I've got a few more, I'll do another pickup video to obviously show you what I've got. So there's, I've got like a list like like that, of course, because there's absolutely stacks in all the games that I'm aware of. And then there's all the games I wasn't aware of. And the amount of car games and racing games on the PlayStation, I had no idea. There was so, there's absolutely tons of rally games, tons of car games, tons of quad games, jet ski games, and just... And if you can race it, they put it on the PlayStation. It's just insane. So, yeah. I mean, I love the rally games. Like, V-Rally 2 was the one I had back then. And I absolutely love that game. So, that's an essential to pick up at some point. But there's loads now. I found, like, Tommy mackinnon has got one which looks really cool. There's a WRC game that looks really nice. Uh, there's a few others as well. So, yeah. There's some, some really cool ATV games I want to check out as well. And it's just... The PlayStation is great in that respect. There's just so many games and so much variety 
that you can never get bored. And let's say the majority of games are under a tenner each. They're dirt cheap, so it's fantastic. If you go on auction, you might get better deals as well. So yeah, the ones I really want right now are Time Crisis and Time Crisis Project Titan. Uh, I would like them in the box with the gun, but it's just they're far too expensive. And to be fair, I don't think they're worth it because especially the first, both of them have got crap cardboard for the box anyway. It's really weak. It damages easily. But the first Time Crisis in particular, I think the second one got a retail um, packaging for the game itself. Whereas the original Time Crisis has got that really cheap case with a thick black bit on the, on the spine and the cheap plastic that just shatters. I hate that. And it's got not for retail on the back, which sucks. So I'm probably just going to buy a loose gun with the adapter and then just get a retail copy of each game. Uh, I absolutely love those games. Time Crisis is a great arcade experience, but Project Titan, yeah, I believe it was, I assume anyway, it was specifically made for PlayStation uh, to take advantage of the hardware. And it's really cool because it's a lot more to it than there is the first one. Uh, it's a great game. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll do my best to make more videos soon. Uh, I don't want to keep leaving it long time between videos. It's just coming up with the inspiration really is the main thing, but... You know, we'll see what happens. It's been great seeing people come back as well. Like my friend Jenny in America has just started making videos as well. So all the old guard are starting to come back and do videos, which is excellent. All right, I'm off. Thanks, guys. See you later. <laughs>